Well, hello, good people. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Hope everybody's having a great Taco Tuesday. I know it's rough getting back to work uh, today, but here's the good thing. It's already Tuesday. It's already Tuesday. Tomorrow's already hump day, and the next day after that is the season opener. Wow. The Rams versus the Bills the day after tomorrow the nfl season is here and it's time to start assessing where we may be now this is of course conjecture because last year at this time the cincinnati Bengals were 27th in power rankings and um they ended up going to the super bowl um i can probably say probably most people weren't counting on them being in the super bowl and that's the great thing about football is you never know how things are going to work out you just don't you don't know and anybody who tells you that they do they're lying to you okay just don't let them lie to you so we're going to start looking at the power rankings but i also want to tell people that the doom and gloom for the dallas cowboys offense is overblown and i've got actually evidence why even if the dallas cowboys offense regresses it's not the end of the season so let's get to it right now this is the Bleacher Report's um, going into week one power rankings. And we're going to slide on through and look at it and see where the NFC East is, at least in thoughts. You know, we've heard people talk about the Washington Commanders, that they're a much improved team and could challenge for the division lead. Some people say the Cowboys are now the third best team in our division and um, that the Giants will be better. And of course, that the Eagles are the best team clearly the class of the organization uh, of the division as well as one of the best teams in football on paper so it starts out with seattle at 32 ouch totally rebuilding atlanta falcons at 31 the bears at 30 houston texans for you east side 29 the jets 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 28 the New York Giants at 27. Damn, they got the Jets and the Giants right together there. Ooh, damn, Daniel Jones. The Jags, 25. I'm sorry, 26. Carolina with Faker Mayfield at 25. The Lions at 24, who could take a big jump if they beat the Eagles. Just saying, Lions, this is your Super Bowl. The Washington Commanders at 23 with Carson Wentz. You mean the guy with the Hall of Fame pedigree? Are you kidding me? Okay. I'm sure the Cowboys are in here soon, too. New England at 22. Damn. Steelers at 21. Browns at 20. We got to have like 18, 19. Got to be Cowboys. 19? Tua and, and that, that the, the receivers they got at 19? What? Vikings at 18. Hold up. Maybe the Cowboys are doing better than I thought. This is me first time looking at this. New Orleans at 17 with Shameless Winston. Okay. Tennessee. Tennessee Titans. Talking all that trash to Thomas Garrett at 16. Let's see. San Francisco 40 Winers at 15? Hold on. You mean we, we're, we've gotten all the way to 15 and the Cowboys haven't been hurt from yet? Or are the Cowboys so bad they're not even making the rankings? That's probably what it is. That's probably what it is. Arizona Cardinals, 14. Hmm. Cardinals better than the 49ers. That's interesting. The Raiders at 13. What? The Eagles at 12? Okay, now I'm intrigued. We're adding impact players are concerned. There isn't a team in the league that has that uh, has been busier in the offseason than the Eagles. The Eagles traded for star wide receiver A.J. Brown and versatile safety Chauncey Garden Johnson, uh, signed edge rusher Hassan Riddick in free agency, and drafted a pair of accomplished defenders from Georgia's national championship defense, Jordan Davis and N'Kobe Dean. 
All those news have moves have ramped up the pressure on quarterback Jalen Hurts to take the next step as a passer and lead the team on a deep playoff run. There are those who feel that Hurts isn't up to the task, but he's told reporters that he has tuned out all the outside noise swirling around the team. I don't hear it, Hurts says. I know there are a ton of different things uh, that are said. I don't hear them. I don't listen. I don't look for it. I just come here. I come to work. I do my job. I strive to grow in doing my job every day. I do me. Okay, the Eagles are everything a team needs to win a division championship and make a deep postseason run as long as the quarterback Jalen Hurst continues to develop. He said a second-year jump as a full-time starter for Hurts should come naturally when playing behind the game's best offensive line and the additions of wide receiver A.J. Brown and Zach Pascal. Defensively, the Eagles ramped up all three levels with the inclusion of Jordan Davis, Hassan Reddick, Nicobe Deem, James Bad- Dradbury, and C.J. Uh, Gordon Johnson. Poor quarterback play may be the only thing holding the squad back. Don't expect it, though. You're telling me that the Eagles aren't in the top ten? And that the Cowboys are higher than the Eagles? Okay. Ah, Cowboys, right there beside them. Okay, let's see what they have to say for the Cowboys. The Dallas Cowboys won 12 games in the NFC East last year. The team fielded the number one offense in terms of yards and points per game and 21. Both of those things didn't matter even a little bit when Dallas was unceremoniously booted from the postseason in the wildcard round. As if that wasn't bad enough, it's been a rocky offseason after left tackle Tyron Smith suffered a serious injury. The Cowboys will open the season with three new starters on the offensive line. When Dallas takes the field in week one, It'll be without two of their top three wide receivers from a year ago. One of the wideouts, Amari Cooper, was traded to Cleveland in what amounted to a salary dump. Team owner Jerry Jones pointed to quarterback Dak Prescott's contract as the reason the Cowboys had to make some difficult financial decisions this offseason. Yet they still got a pile of money left. The more you pay your quarterback, the teams that pay the big ticket on the quarterback, they have to sacrifice in some places, Jones said Friday during an interview. Um, the fact are there's no free lunch. Every dollar you spend on a player is a dollar you can't spend someplace else. See, this is why I feel like Dak Prescott is, is that, that the Cowboys are holding a grudge against Dak for getting the deal that he got. That they are, yeah, well, we couldn't put any, you know, we, we can't get any players around you because you took too much money. Not looking at all the other players like, you know, uh, Jalen Smith or, you know, Zeke Elliott. You, Dak, you're the reason. Okay. To be clear, the Cowboys still have no shortage of talents, whether it's Prescott, CeeDee Lamb, Zeke Elliott, Tony Pollard on offense, and reigning defensive rookie of the year, Michael Parsons, the quarterback, Diggs on defense. But in a year when the Eagles seemingly add pieces left and right, the Cowboys may have come back to the pack a little bit. Okay. I'll take that. Now, what we've been sold on is the Cowboys have really screwed themselves because their their offense is going to be terrible. So the question is, you know, we were number one. We can't go up any higher than that last from last year. The question is, how far back will it go? Let's take the worst case scenario, the worst case scenario that we had, which we have to look at and say 2017. 2017, after the Cowboys, you know, having the great you know rookie season of Zeke and Dak, Um, and making the playoffs, 2017 was a horrible year for a multitude of reasons. Zeke Elliott um, being suspended for six games, and not only being suspended for those games, the constantly going to court in New York and everything else on this thing was a distraction for the team. We had Tyron Smith miss time, and we had the infamous... Chaz Green game. We also had Sean Lee, who, before Sean Lee got injured, before we got injured with Sean Lee, our defense was giving up only about 83 yards on the ground, and it went to 180, just pointing that out, although that didn't have anything to do with the offense. Um, The offense was terrible. And if we look at the numbers here, you know, shout out to the guys from uh, Pro Football Reference. I love using pro football reference for 
their statistics because they are they're great and and you know you want to use the same thing so that way you can be consistent with what you have and let me bump it up just a little bit here to see make it a little bit bigger for us old guys okay that season that season that was abysmal here's the interesting thing the Cowboys offense team statistics wise okay we go to am I on the right year let me make sure I'm on the right year 2017 okay 2017 Dak Prescott's second year where everybody said he regressed and people were saying that he's going to be flipping burgers at Burger King, you know, in two years. The funny thing is, is they finished up 9-7 and seven that season. Hmm. Let's dig into the numbers of what happened on that season. When we look at it, we ended up having 5,311 yards on that season. Um, we averaged 5.3 yards per play. Dak Prescott had 3,141 yards with only 22 touchdown passes and 13 interceptions. So my first question to you is this. When we think about Dak Prescott, his second season versus where he is now, is it safe to say that he's a better quarterback now than he was then? I'm going to say that I think he's markedly better than that. Uh, I think he's definitely going to have more than 3,100 yards I don't care who he has as receivers. I can guarantee you that he's going to have more than 22 TDs, and I doubt that he'll have 13 interceptions. That's the first thing. And you look at where that ranked as far as our passing game. um, We ranked 29th in passing, 26 in yards, 18 in TDs, and 14, I'm sorry, 16 in interceptions. I'm betting that the offense is better than that season. Here's the other thing we're going to look at. Rushing the football. We rushed the ball. And this is more like eagle-like. 2,170 yards, which is surprising because we had Zeke Elliott gone, which we were second. And if we break down the numbers on it, which we will in a second, we'll look and see how it was. Our defense... Our defense, let's look at those numbers, was 13th rated in scoring defense. Is it a safe assumption that we should be better than 13th in uh, scoring defense? I'm thinking that we will be. I think we will be better than 8th in yardage, and I clearly think we'll be better than 16th in taking away the football. I think our defense is markedly better than in 2017. So let's go down a little further here with our, our, our statistics here. Because if we say that Zeke Elliott, because I know a lot of people are going to say, well, Zeke Elliott, you know, he was, you know, a great back and things like that. And now, you know, he's not the same guy. Well, here's the thing. Zeke Elliott rushed for 983 yards. We had Alfred Morris who rushed for 547 and Dak for 357 and then Rod Smith. Um... I'm going to say that even though Zeke was on one leg because of the um, jacked up leg, that we're going to get more yards than 983 from Zeke. We got over 1,000 last year with him on one leg. So, I'm, you know, it's not going to be 98 yards a game. I don't expect that. But what I will also say is I expect to have more than 547 yards from Tony Pollard. I'm going to say that our running game should be up there, I would say that our running game should be able to easily make over 1,800 yards. Maybe not the 2,100 we had that year, but I'm betting that we actually do do pretty good on that. Let's take a look at our receiving core. This is, this is where it's interesting because we didn't exactly have a great receiving core. We had Ryan Switzer, who's retired. We had Terrence Williams. Been retired. We had Des Bryant, but Des Bryant was kind of in the twilight of his career. He was our leading receiver at 838. I'm going to say that C.D. Lamb is going to have a better season than that. I'm just going to I'm I'm going to put it out there. I believe that he's going to have a better year than that. Um, and we had Jason Witten, 
okay, the, the twilight of Jason Witten's career, with 560 yards. I'm going to say that I looked for um, Jake Ferguson to have that kind of yards. And I put in there a Dalton Schultz. We also had Cole Beasley and Bryce Butler. So let, let's be clear. We had an old Jason Witten, an old Des Bryant, a Ryan Switzer, a Cole Beasley, a Bryce Butler as receivers. I believe, and maybe I'm wrong, maybe I'm wrong, that CD is better than Des right now. I would say Noah Brown is probably as good as what Cole Beasley was that year because Cole Beasley only had 314 yards. I will say our tight ends are definitely better than Jason Witten was at that year. And so on. So worst case scenario is we're that bad, right? But that team still went 9-7, and seven, just barely missing the playoffs. Just missing the playoffs. I don't think that our offense will be as bad as that. I told you, I think the running game will be better than what it was last year with a healthy Zeke and Tony Pollard. I think that our receiving core is better now, and our quarterback is way better. Now, I understand our offensive line at the moment on paper looks like it's taking major hits, but Lyle Collins was already replaced by Terrence Steele on the right side. Connor Williams... We'll see what he does with Miami. Um, I haven't looked up uh, the latest stories with him, but they're trying to make him a center. Um, you can't look at him and say that we have regressed much, you know, even going to Connor McGovern. Hell, if Connor McGovern just has seven penalties, we were already doing better. And we'll see about Terrence Steele versus Tyron Smith. Tyron Smith, who's missed a lot of games. So, you know, he just needs to be better than 11 games than Tyron Smith, and then that's actually an improvement. So don't believe the hype that the Dallas Cowboys are going to be garbage and that they're going to the toilet and that they don't have players. We're going to be okay. We're going to be there when the dust clears. And I believe it's actually going to be a good season. Now, again, you know, I'm called a homer. What do you expect? You know, it's Cowboy Joe Boo. I wouldn't be a Washington homer if I was called Cowboy Joe Boo, would I? So, in the end, you know what I'm going to say about the Eagles? Well, fuck the Eagles. <laughs> oh, oh, Vado, you, know, Vado, you put it just right. And I'll see you guys later.